When I was in college, I had a very strange friend. These days, he's more of an enemy than a friend, but anyway, his name is Kevin. He was a fanatic who was obsessed with scorpions, and he only wore clothes with scorpions on them from head to toe. He said he kept all kinds of scorpions in his home and often brought live scorpions to school to surprise his friends. One day, I decided to go to his house with some friends to hang out, but that was the beginning of a disaster. When we arrived at his house, we were really surprised. His house was quite large, he lived alone, and there were numerous terrariums filled with scorpions. We looked at the scorpions of various sizes and colors for a while. Then Kevin asked us what we wanted to eat, and I suddenly got playful and said, I want to eat fried scorpions. Then the friends all burst into laughter, and Kevin also smiled brightly. We decided to order pizza, and after eating and playing video games, we were about to go home. As our friends were heading out, Kevin grabbed my shoulder and asked me to stay a little longer. I said okay, and my friends left first. But shortly after that, my eyesight went dark and I collapsed. When I opened my eyes, my hands and feet were tied and I was in a closed room. I screamed as loud as I could, and after a while, Kevin came running. When I swore at him and asked what he was doing, he said, My children are so angry because of what you said earlier that they are raising their tails. Look! Then he started bringing terrariums full of scorpions in front of me. Soon, dozens of various scorpions were placed in front of me, and he said, You're my friend, so I'll only sting you three times. Choose three of these scorpions. Among these children, some are very poisonous and some are only a little. Try and guess whose poison is weaker. I was livid and shouted that I would kill all of his scorpions, but he picked up one scorpion and said, Before that, think about which scorpions are not poisonous. The scorpion's tail attempted to sting me right before my eyes, and my whole body was drenched in sweat from the extreme fear. I tried to cajole him, but he wouldn't listen to me and told me that if I didn't pick a scorpion in one minute, he would pick it himself. I ended up choosing one. Then he held the scorpion against my bound hand, and the scorpion stung my hand with its tail. And then a tremendous pain came over me. I shouted out in agony. He said with a smile, It was a good choice. This child is poisonous, but not dangerously so. How is it? It's still the first round, so you can survive, right? I howled. He checked my pulse and asked me to choose the second scorpion. I hesitated, but he threatened me again by holding a scorpion in front of me, and so I ended up choosing one. When this scorpion stung my hand, I felt even more pain than before, and I was struggling to catch my breath. I screamed for help. Kevin said while examining my pupils, You're still okay, but that kid you just picked is a very poisonous one. It's so exciting to see people being poisoned right in front of my eyes. Please hold on and don't die. There's still one round left. I cried and screamed that I couldn't breathe, and he just laughed crazily. I begged him to save me, and he said, Such a pity, but I can't help it. There's still one more scorpion player left, so choose the last one carefully. I ended up picking one, and again the scorpion stung me, and although it hurt, there were no serious symptoms. You just picked a kid who wasn't very poisonous. You're lucky. Kevin clapped his hands and left the room, and I fainted. When I woke up, what must have been hours later, Kevin was sitting in front of me. As he handed me a wad of cash, he said, Now, here's $1,000. This is my thanks for a really fun show today. Don't even think about reporting it to the police. I would just tell them that you got stung while handling a scorpion by yourself. I nodded at him to pretend to cooperate. Then he said happily, Good, I think my kid's anger has calmed down a bit now. <laughs> he then released me and I went straight to the hospital. I managed to recover after receiving treatment. After a few days, I couldn't hold back my anger and decided to get revenge on him. So I contacted him and asked him to do the Scorpion show one more time. He obliged and asked me to come to his house. I went to his house, knocked, and as soon as he opened the door, I punched him in the face with all my might. 
He fell backwards and crawled towards the scorpion terrariums. I chased him and beat him like crazy. He was so stuck in a stupor that he couldn't get up from the floor. I took a knife from his kitchen and stabbed all the scorpions to death. Kevin cried and I returned home. After that, he didn't come to school again and no one saw or heard from him. I don't know what he's doing now. I just hope I never run into him again. The year was 2012. I was just back home from a normal school day. My mother was dating my best friend's father at the time, so it was very common for the two of us to sleep at each other's houses. On that fateful day, my friend, who I'll call April, and I decided to have a sleepover at my house. I used to sleep with my mom, but as I got a visit from April that day, we decided to have a slumber party and sleep on the bunk bed in my brother's room. That night, we had dinner, played common games at slumber parties for teenage girls, ate popcorn, put on makeup, took pictures, etc. We decided to go to sleep around midnight, leaving the radio on, which admitted a soft blue light from the viewfinder, which lit the room slightly. April decided to sleep on the bottom bunk, and I slept on the top. I woke up in the middle of the night feeling cold, and with my back, which was facing the bedroom door, uncovered. So, I decided to turn around to pull the cover that was falling off the bed. At that same moment that I looked down and pulled up the blanket, turning back to the wall, I saw a figure. I then turned quickly to look and see what the figure was. Usually, when we quickly look somewhere and see a figure, we quickly look back at the place and see nothing. Only this time, it was there, the figure. But it was no longer a figure. It was a young-looking girl, standing there, looking at me. I remember every detail of her face. She had short, neck-length black hair. Her body was thin, extremely thin. Her skin looked a light brown tone. Her nose was thin and pointed like a model's. Her eyes were large and black. The darkness of the night made them even darker. And she was just there, standing completely still, watching me. She could have been looking at April, who was right in front of her, but no. She was staring at me with those big, dark eyes. In a moment of fright, I sat on the bed, widened my eyes and stared at her, not believing that this was real. But she just stood there, looking at me for what felt like two minutes. When she realized I can see her, she recoiled back, startled that I can see her too, and then in one quick motion, she jumped onto April's bed. I thought she was still there, that she might be doing something with April, or that she would be waiting for me to sleep again to get out of there, so I decided to look. I leaned over the bunk, leaning against the wood of the upper headboard, peering fearfully into the lower bunk to see where my nighttime visitor and friend were. But the only thing I could see was April sleeping peacefully. After that, I lay still for a while trying to process what had just happened until I finally managed to fall asleep. The next day, I told my mom and April what had happened and they didn't believe me. I never saw that girl again and I could never sleep in that room again. But to this day, I can clearly remember her small, lean body and her massive black eyes staring at me that night. Who was that girl? 